Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just want to let you know that uh, this is the second video for the day. And most of you that are uh, subscribed to the channel and that follow me on the channel, you know what day it is. That's right, it's Mailbox Monday. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna read this week's messages and uh, DMs and questions and get some answers for you guys and, and uh, go through some things and hopefully this is gonna brighten up your Monday because that's what it's all about. Before I jump into this, please like, subscribe, share, uh, follow, do all the good stuff, help me continue to grow the channel. As you can tell, I'm doing my best. Remember, I'm a, I'm a survivor, a narcissistic abuse survivor and now a thriver and my whole goal is to just let you guys understand you're not alone and that uh, we're, we're all here for each other and to educate people about narcissistic abuse. So without further ado, I will jump into Mailbox Monday. The first question is from Balboa. And Balboa writes, what about your nonprofit idea, Andrew? Balboa, thank you for bringing that up. The nonprofit idea is going to take place once I get some funding and to get a little more stable on, on exactly the direction of what I want to do and where I want to locate this. Um, it's, it's, the project's in its infancy. But this is my moonshot, meaning this is my goal, my dream, my passion. This is everything I'm working for now. Uh, I'm literally a, uh, doing what I'm, when I do have free time, I'm spending all of my free time, and I, I mean all of it, on fighting narcissistic abuse, recovery, education, development of people, uh, learning about all these things that go on. And the whole idea is so that I can educate people and let them understand that the sooner they educate on the topic, educate themselves on the topic, the better off they'll be protected against this happening. Because what happened to me, I do not want to happen to anybody ever again. It's, it, it, it is so difficult going through this, and I sincerely wish that I had known about it in high school, if, if not earlier. Um, but to get back on track, the nonprofit idea is something that will happen, and uh, thank you for bringing that up. I'll keep you guys posted, certainly. The next one's from Mittens. Mittens, why does the narc disappear after the discard? Good question. Uh, this one we've touched on a little bit, but the answer there, Mittens, is simply because the narcissist has sucked you dry of all of your supply, all of your love, empathy, emotions, all the goodness that you have that you offer that the narcissist does not have. Uh, what they do is they feed off that from you and uh, they will disappear, um, which is exactly what happened to me, ironically enough. But they'll disappear, meaning they're looking for a new source, a new source, a new supply, and trust me, they will find it. They'll find the new supply um, until that supply runs dry, and then of course it goes on and on. But um, they disappear because they don't want to face the truth. They don't want to face what uh, what the reality is that maybe they were at fault. Maybe that um, it, it wasn't just everything wasn't one person. That they don't they don't want to face reality is the best way to say it. So they run and hide, just like a seven-year-old kid would disappear. You know, that's what they do. And uh, it's unfortunate, but it's on them, and that's, that's the life of a narcissist, a narcissistic abuser, a narcissistic abuser. Third question is from Tori145. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Tori. That means the world to me. I, uh, I know I'm making a difference on this channel and I know I'm making a difference in, in the space. And um, I've had a lot of comments recently saying to me that thank you for being here. And uh, it means the world to me, so thank you. I'm doing this just for education for people. I'm not doing it for money or anything. I'm doing it because I want to devote my time to help people out. And this is my calling and I didn't ask for it, but it's what I'm doing. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, Tori. Uh, gosh. Uh, Dormant. Dormant writes, uh, why, why does the MP why do they not have, why does the narcissistic abuser not have empathy? The reason they don't have it is, um, well, to be fair, they do have it. They just choose not to use it. And they just choose to 
literally live in their own movie and do what they want to do and when they want to do it and how they want to do it. And they don't, uh, they don't concern themselves with you or your feelings or those around them. Remember, everybody is a supply for the narcissist. Every single person. They don't look at people the way we do. They see things in black and white. Black, you're against me. White, you're with me. Or vice versa, however you want to see it. But, but they, empathy, they, they turn it on and off. Like in the love bombing stage, they will use what little empathy they do have. And then quickly it will dissipate as it did in my relationship and I'm sure in a lot of yours. And uh, they're just, they're parasites, you guys. They're parasites. And they're out there to take as much as, as they can from anybody on the planet that's willing to give them their supply. Or if you're like I was, and I'm sure most of you are, you're, you're, you don't even know what you're dealing with. And before you know it, you're a shell of yourself. So that's the empathy question answer. Thank you very much, uh, Dormant. Um, Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. Um, true love wins. Oh. Uh, Wendy's asking about uh, the wedding. So when you get married and... and do you know anything or do you see the signs, the narcissism and, and things like that? That's up to you and your individual situation. Um, and if you're a healthy person and an empathetic person, which I'm certain you are because you're on my channel, is you probably were in love and gave your heart and soul to the other person and just thought this, could, this would be you know, an incredible relationship for years to come, hopefully the rest of your lives. Uh, that's what I thought, to be fair, I, I really believe that. But the narcissist... Uh, in this case, they don't look at it that way. They look at that as another stage to be st stood upon or a pedestal to be put upon, and it's more of their, their source. Think about a wedding. It takes months, maybe years to plan, and all that time they're getting attention, they're getting supply, and it's not just you. It's from the designer, it's from the cake people, it's from the setup, it's from the venue, it's from the musicians, whatever your, however your wedding is. Even if it's at, at the justice of the piece, it's still some sort of supply for them because they'll be posting on social, and letting all the friends know and all this. So um, they know exactly what they're doing. They just, I, I hate, I know it hurts to say, but they weren't in love with you. And if, I'm sorry to say that, but they weren't. Same with my relationship. My narcissistic abusive wife was never in love with me. Um, okay, comment, this is from Searching Now. Uh, comment on the Dr. Jekyll video I shot the other day, yes. That is 100% true, and thank you. I know what happened to you. You mentioned that, that you're going through this, and it's disgusting, and you can't believe that somebody does that. It's the same thing. Yes, that, that's a real situation. The Dr. Jekyll and Mr. or Mrs. Hyde, uh, the two faces of the narcissist. Yes, that's real. And um, you know, at least you watch the video, and you, you can educate yourself a little better and know what to do and how to combat it and uh, you know, how to process things. That, that is a major indication you're in a narcissistic abusive relationship is the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde syndrome. Uh, the narcissist eyebrows. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Yes, again, the study was done uh, a couple months ago and one of the telltale signs of a narcissist would be eyebrows. It doesn't mean everybody with good eyebrows is a narcissist by any means, but a study they, they took, I believe it was in Canada, if I'm not mistaken, uh, indicated that you can tell uh, by the narcissist, by someone's eyebrows, if perhaps they are a narcissist or not. So, yes, we talked about that one. Uh, yes, from my experience, eyebrows say a lot. Let's put it that way. And finally, Andrew, where are you living? Where are you from? And that's from Healing in My Time Frame. Thank you, Healing in My Time Frame. Uh, I'll tell you a little more about me. I am from the United States originally. And I have lived out of the country for over 20 years. And I am going to be returning to the good old red, white, and blue this year. So um, I've been all over the world doing many different things. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a, uh, a U.S. citizen born and bred in, on the East Coast. And I'm going to be moving back there by the end of this, this year. And where to, I'm not sure. But that's one of the reasons I need to figure out. Uh, about the nonprofit, which where I want to go to, where I want to locate myself, and find out the best possible place for the location for the start for the uh, nonprofit to end narcissistic abuse and to educate people in narcissistic abusive relationships. Uh, that is my goal, my mission, my passion, my dream, and I will get it done, no doubt about it. Uh, but that you know there are a lot of moving parts still, 
and I'm trying to figure that out. Once I find out, I'm going to let you guys know. But thank you for asking. And uh, guys, I appreciate everything. Remember, like, subscribe, share, thumbs up, all the good stuff. You are not alone. Uh, recently, I've talked with many people on DMs on various platforms, and I've had some comments in videos about uh, you know recent things they're going through. And I am here. If anybody wants to drop me a DM, I will always reply back to you, and I always will. B believe me, I will, because I know what it's like when you feel like you're isolated and you're alone and you have no one to talk to. Well, I'm your guy. I'm here to help you, and I've lived through it firsthand, and I'm still dealing with it right now, uh, ramifications of it. So God bless you all. I love you all. Remember, like, subscribe, share, uh, thumbs up, all the good stuff. You're not alone, and uh, I love you guys. I'm going to give you a big smile before the ending, and I cried a little bit, so thank you for bringing that out to me. I know I'm doing the right thing just by that. Bye.